What is going on my dear Comquats? Welcome back to another Smash Up video. Today we're looking at none other than the prehistoric beasts, the dinos. Shout out to Stefan for recommending the dinosaurs be next. Just like the aliens, the dinosaurs were released in the base game of Smash Up. Now the main theme you're going to see here in the dinosaurs is that they're just pretty powerful. Now the dinosaurs are a standard Smash Up deck. You have four level two powers, three level three powers, two level four powers, but the kicker here is that the King Rex is actually power level 7 rather than power level 5 in most Smash Up factions. Throughout the slides you're going to find that the King Rex and the War Raptors are really the main focus here. I really like how the King Rex is a whopping 7 power and I really do like how the War Raptors kind of stack. The War Raptor has a really thematic ability that says it gains plus one power for each War Raptor that's on its base, including itself. So instantly it's going to have three power, which I think is really cool. You have three power level three armor stegos that says ongoing it has plus two power during other players turns. You have two power level four minions, the laser tops, which say you have to destroy a minion of power two or less that is on that base. And an important note is that it doesn't say you may, you actually have to destroy a power level two minion that is on the base that you play laser tops. And as you'll see, that can be kind of a detriment if you're playing with any other faction that has power level two minions. And then finally, the big daddy, the King Rex, no abilities, but he does have a whopping seven power. All the dinosaurs actions really have something to do with either buffing your minions power, nerfing other minions powers or reducing the breakpoint of bases. There are a couple outliers but let's go ahead and go through them. Augmentation lets you give a minion plus four power until the end of your turn. Howl says each of your minions gains plus one power until the end of your turn. Natural selection says choose one of your minions on a base, destroy a minion there with less power than yours. Upgrade lets you play it on a minion and gives it plus two power. Tooth and Claw and Guns lets you play on a minion, and then if ability would affect that minion, you'd get to destroy that card, and the ability does not actually affect the minion. Kind of like a little barrier. You have Survival of the Fittest, which says, destroy the lowest power minion, you choose in case of a tie, on each base with a higher power minion. And since most of your minions are higher powered, that Survival of the Fittest card, if you play it, can become a pretty big swing turn. You have one copy of Wildlife Preserve, which says you get to play it on a base, and your minions are not affected by other players' actions. And finally, Rampage. Reduce the breakpoint of a base by the power of one of your minions on that base until the end of the turn. And as you could have already figured it out, the dinosaur's strength is in its strength. We can see this just by looking at the King Rex himself being power level 7. You have two power level 4 minions that let you destroy level 2 minions or less, and then you have four level 2 minions that are stronger when bounded together. The War Raptors are extremely strong, and if you can get them all together on a base, that's 24 power if all War Raptors are on that same base. And just like what we talked about earlier, the actions buff your power even more to ridiculous numbers. But as you could have already guessed, the dinosaur's weaknesses are, yes, they're strong, but that's really all they are. They will tend to fizzle out mid to late game after one or two base scores. Another thing is that they don't have very much card draw, so getting to your War Raptors and your King Minion could prove to be difficult in the long run. And just like I alluded to earlier, some of the cards seem like they work against you most of the time, such as the Armor Stego by boosting its power to level 5, and that kind of helps your opponent by getting closer to breaking a base. Something worthy to note is that when you break a base on your turn, you're pretty much holding the leverage over your opponent. So the armored stego really works against you in this fashion. And finally, the laser tops have to destroy a minion of power two or less. Technically, the dinosaurs don't have any minions of power two or less, because when you put the war raptor down, it immediately gets plus one power thanks to its ability. However, if you're playing with other factions that have power level two or less, say the robots for example, that laser tops is going to have to target those minions if there are no other opponent's minions that are power two or less on the base that you play it. So it can be kind of annoying for you. Okay, so the dinosaurs are pretty strong, but what pairings are gonna make those dinosaurs shine even brighter? Well, how about even more power? We talked about how the King Rex is a ridiculous power level seven. So what about adding three more? If you combine the dinosaurs with the shapeshifters, you can effectively have four power level seven King Rexes. And this is done with the three copies of Mimic that are in the shapeshifters faction, which have an ability that says ongoing, this minion's power is equal to the highest power printed on a minion card in play. And say that the King Rex isn't the higher powered minion, well, then the Mimic will copy even higher power. Seems like a great combo. The only other thing that I would note in this combination is that probably getting the King Rex might prove to be a little bit difficult. But once he's out, it's gonna be a huge nuisance for your opponents to deal with. Another great pairing that I thought would work well with the dinosaurs is actually the steampunks. 
Now we talked about boosting power with the shapeshifters via the King Rex. Well, the War Raptors, if you have them all on the board on the same base, that's 24 power. So if you can keep those guys around and move them around, it might prove to be pretty powerful. With the combination that I have to the left, if you have Zeppelins on your bases, you can move your War Raptors around freely, and then you have your copies of Mechanic that once the Zeppelins go to the discard pile, you can put them right back onto bases. And another perk that the Steampunks have is the Rotary Slug Thrower which when you have it on a base, it gives all your minions there plus two power. So we know that the War Raptors, when stacked together, boost their power immensely. Well, if there's a Rotary Slug Thrower on that base, yeah, the power just gets insane. Again, another faction that will keep your War Raptors around is the Tornadoes, being able to move them after and before bases score, or just during your turn. As you can see, I think the perks of the dinosaurs is the King Rex and the War Raptors. So playing off the idea that the War Raptors stack together, well, why not another faction that boosts your power with more minions on the same base? The Mythical Horses achieve this very well. With action cards that say play an extra minion at a base where you have a minion, and Sea Star's ability that says if you have this minion on a base where you have another minion, you can play an extra minion this turn, you can get your War Raptors and Mythic Horses power up pretty fast in just one turn. And just like what we talked about with the weaknesses, it can be difficult for the dinosaurs to draw cards. So the power level 4 minion Rainbow will let you do that. And just to continue the discussion of synergy, Starlight, the king minion of the mythic horses, lets you have plus one power for each of your other minions here. So the main theme of this combination is stack them all on one base. And just as always, I love asking the community what they think the best faction pairings are. And again, it looks like the community does agree with me that the shapeshifters and steampunks are a pretty good combo. But it looks like the mythic horses and the tornadoes didn't get any votes at all. Now something I will note is that there were other factions that were voted for, but I only have so much space to put on this pie chart until it starts getting really messy. So let's go down the line. The shapeshifters got 10 votes, the steampunks got 6, narrowly beating the cyborg apes that got five votes which makes sense why people voted for cyborg apes they have a lot of action cards that let you play on minions to boost power so going along with the theme of the dinosaurs boosting them even more power makes sense to me and then continuing down the line there were four votes for the disco dancers three votes for the killer plants two votes for the mythic greeks two votes for miskatonic university two votes for robots two votes for wizards two votes for the changer bots and two votes for the all-stars Minor note, I think that the All-Stars got votes purely because there's an extra King Rex in the faction of All-Stars. So really you have two King Rexes in the deck. However, if you're playing with the Shapeshifters, you already technically have three if they're all out on the board at the same time. Yes, there's more insurance because if at some point the King Rex does get taken down or the base scores with the King Rex on it, then the mimics become useless. But I think I like the flexibility of the Shapeshifters more than just having two King Rexes. All right, so let's talk about the non-ideal pairings for the dinos. So the dinosaurs have really big power levels, which means it can kind of go with almost everything. However, there's a few things that do get in the way of the dinosaurs. First off, with the exception of laser tops, the dinosaurs don't really have any abilities that come into play when you play it. So the time traveling dinosaurs, as thematic as they are, don't really work together because the time travelers really abuse the minion abilities that come into play. And then any other faction that has lower level minions that are power two or less can put you in tricky situations due to your laser tops. Moving on to the favorable matchups for the dinosaurs. Well, the dinosaurs can't easily be destroyed and conversely can destroy lower powered minions. Since the robots faction has a ton of lower powered minions, the laser atops is gonna be destroying those left and right. And then other factions that have to do with destroying minions, such as the pirates, the vampires, and the sharks, well, those factions are gonna have a hard time trying to destroy those big daddy dinosaurs. Moving on to the unfavorables, the dinosaurs can't be destroyed easily, but they don't really have any defense from anything else such as movement or returning to hand. So the aliens having the ability to return your minions to the hand is gonna prove to be kind of difficult for you. Same with the tornadoes and the sumo wrestlers, they can push your minions out of the way to other bases that you don't want them to be on. And with that said, that's pretty much the dinosaurs. Thanks for watching everybody. Please help me out by smashing the like button and hitting subscribe for future videos. Coming up next is the suggested ninjas faction. This one's gonna be kind of interesting, so make sure you're a part of the Smash Posting Facebook group so you can vote which faction you think pairs well with the ninjas. Until next time, we'll see you in the next one. Peace!